Hello and welcome. Uh, I have the pleasure, uh, I'm Steve Lewis, and I have the pleasure of being here with Reggie McNeil with us this, uh, for a tape time when we were supposed to have Reggie speak to us on Sunday, but because of weather, we were not unable to be there. Y'all messed that up. Yeah, we, we did. Yeah. And coming yeah. from South Carolina, I am sure <laughs> that you welcomed this wonderful weather we've had. So, uh, as you know, we're in the I am statements, and I've had the last few weeks and exploring uh, I am the bread of life and I am the light. And uh, Reggie's uh, task was to explore I'm the gate and I'm the good shepherd. And so uh, in lieu of that sermon that you didn't hear, we're just going to have a conversation. And uh, so Reggie, it's good to have you. Thanks. And uh, thanks for being here with us. And, uh, you know, t talk to us, man, about I, what you wanted I, to do. I actually think your folks have a little luck that they didn't have to sit through this sermon. It's not that good. <laughs> but uh, so maybe can we turn can. turn it off. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. You know, and it ought to be quicker this way and all that. But, you know, Sunday, what I, and, and by the way, I am glad. I think I'm supposed to say to see you, but I can't. Uh, but I'm, uh, I am glad to be here. It's always fun to come out and persecute uh, the Hillspring crowd. Um, you know, Steve, I, it's, I, I, would, I would have started Sunday with asking people kind of a funny, you know, are you feeling sheepish today? And just talk about sheep a little bit, since that's the whole I am statement of the gate for the sheep. I'm the good shepherd. Yeah, yeah, I did a little uh, research on sheep. Um, you know, you, you always hear they're dumb animals. Yeah. They're not, Is it right? you know, yeah. honestly, they're, yeah. they're, they're, uh, they're somewhere between a cow and a pig in their IQ and they're closer to the pig. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're smarter. They actually have uh, a memory that of, of, they can hold in their memory up to 50 different um, sound, uh, uh, voices. Mm -hmm. You know, so when later on we're going to read yeah. My Sheep Hear My Voice, voice. Yeah. they that's, actually, that's really that is a, a okay. real, okay. Uh, they have that capacity. And they have memory up to 50 people. Wow. Uh, you know, they eat, well, they sleep four hours a day. Yeah. They use most of their day eating, which right. is at the point I begin to identify with the <laughs> sheep. I think that ain't so bad. You know, and, and they, yeah, they're kind of yeah. like cows, too. They regurgitate, and they chew yeah, on their yeah. stuff. So they, you know, they eat uh, all day long. And they're social animals. Mm -hmm. You would expect that yeah, yeah. Um, because they live in these flocks. Interestingly, if you separate a sheep from the flock, I mean, they get highly agitated. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when Jesus tells the... Uh, the parable about the the shepherd that goes out after the one sheep, yeah. you know, and you always say well, he's got ninety nine out of a hundred. What's the deal? Well, that that sheep was terrified, yeah. and so they always want to be brought back to the flock. It's just fascinating yeah. little study about about sheep. And so, uh, since Jesus compares us to that, and we go all the way back to the Old Testament with the sheep of his pasture, I yeah. thought, you yeah, know, let's give sheep a break. And, uh, you yeah. know, it's not so bad to be a sheep. Uh, yeah. There's some good things to it. Yeah, I'm, I'm a city kid and long line of non-country people, so I don't really know that much about yeah. farm well, animals or otherwise. But, well, uh, I didn't yeah. either. You yeah. can imagine what's coming up on my computer now that I've <laughs> Googled sheep. John I mean, Deere's got you. Trust me. I, 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 what kind of sheep skin do you want? Yeah, I mean, I, right. it's, it's crazy yeah. stuff. Yeah. But these I am statements, yeah. you know, you reference the others, which talk about the nature of God, really. You right. know, But these two statements really focus on the relationship aspect mm -hmm. between Jesus and us. And it's, and it's really cool. And the first one he, of course, talks about is being the gate for the sheep. You want to? Yeah, yeah, let's read that okay. one. Uh, so in John chapter 10, in the first um, 10 verses, really deals with that piece. And then the next uh, section is going to deal with the good shepherd. So it says, Very truly I tell you, the Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. That's what you just said. Yeah. Uh, he calls his own sheep by name and, they, and then leads them out. When he has brought them out, uh, all, all of his own, he goes ahead of them, and, he, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize the stranger's voice. And Jesus used this as a figure of speech. But the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Jesus then, so therefore Jesus said again, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep, and all who come before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep do, did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. 
and I will come in and go out in, and, and, and pasture. And the thief will come to steal and to kill and destroy. But I have come that you might have life and have it fully. You know, this uh, analogy of Jesus that Jesus uses, metaphor being the gate to the sheep. There again, you know, uh, since I'm not a shepherd or come from that, uh, literally in the villages, there would be outside the village uh, a pen or a, a, a holding area mm -hmm. where multiple flocks could be housed uh, overnight and the shepherds would go into town, whatever. And, um, and so what Jesus is saying, I'm the gate, and that there was a paid porter mm -hmm. who would man that gate, yeah. you know, so, you know, just for protection and for keep thieves out and all that kind of stuff. And, and interestingly, in the morning, when they would call out, the shepherds would call their sheep out by name. By name. And that's how they would separate the flocks. Yeah. If they were out in the field, like, let's say, that, uh, the shepherds that heard the angels, mm -hmm. uh, you mm -hmm. know, announce the birth, <clears throat> they would frequently put the sheep in a cave mm -hmm. or some little rock enclosure. And the shepherd literally would lay right. down across yeah. and be the, sh be the gate. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, Jesus is pulling on both of those. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, and everybody that heard him then would know exactly what he's talking sure, about. Sure. You know, I'm, I'm the guy that's securing this, this mm -hmm. fold. And it seems to me that there are, he mentions four benefits uh, to the sheep because he's the gatekeeper. One is they have salvation. You know, mm -hmm. I've, mm -hmm. I've come so that they can be saved. Secondly, they're secure. Uh, uh, he, he uses a phrase in there. Uh, go in and come out. And that was a phrase all the way back to Deuteronomy and Kings and the Old Testament. Yeah, yeah. If Israel was at peace, then the people could go in and come out at will and not worry. They weren't holed up in a siege or worried that if they go out, some, you know, body might take them out. So, you know, the, the sheep aren't just saved. They're secure. They're, they can relax in it. They're fed. He talks about leads them out to pasture. And then uh, most of all, uh, they have abundant life. You know, the old King James says, uh, you know, the, the text we're reading says a meaningful and life to the full or whatever. The old King James says abundant mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. And, and his, he's drawing the distinction between any other religious pursuit and a relationship with him. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, uh, you know, gosh, we, we're, we're blessed. Uh, to be in, in, in Jesus flock because we get all those things. And, but he also then went on with a good shepherd uh, yeah. analogy. Well, you know, the other thing I was thinking about with the sheep and the voice recognition is uh, there's a real sense of discernment in that too, isn't there? Because, I mean, on our journeys in ministry all these years, people trying to discern, you know, what does the voice of God sound like? Or oh, when do you know yeah. God's speaking? Or, and so the whole idea that, you know, as you grow in your faith, you, you, you learn to hear that voice yes. and recognize when it's, God is speaking to you. you I, know? It, was, so. it was Luther, I think, who said, there is one voice I've learned to hear above all yes, others. Yes. But it does take practice. Yes, and I actually will talk about that yeah. uh, at the very yeah. end of it's our time. It's a spiritual discipline, yeah. isn't it? So, yeah, the second part of the I am statement is, I am the good shepherd. So in verse 11 of chapter 10, it says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hard hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees a wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks and the flock is scattered. A man that runs away because he's not, he is a hired hand cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. You're probably seeing on your screen right now just a classic picture of the Good Shepherd. I mean, everyone has this image <clears throat> of Jesus, you know, with the staff and the lamb and, the, and, and all that. And uh, he's really picking up on a theme that goes all the way back to the Old Testament. I mean, we're called the sheep of his pasture back then. And the most famous verse yeah, yeah. in the Bible, you know, it's read it, you know, yeah. I mean, the Lord is my shepherd. Yeah. Psalm, uh, 23. Psalm 23. Yeah, yeah. Funerals, uh, even, even weddings. I mean, right. it's, it's, it's a, uh, the most famous uh, scripture. So, and then Jesus in his own ministry, he referred to his followers as a little flock in Luke. Uh, he talked about when he looked at Jerusalem and the people, and then at another time when he's out and people 
are just coming for his teaching. And he says he looks at them like a sheep without a shepherd, <clears throat> a flock without a shepherd. <clears throat> Excuse me. But this I am statement of being the good shepherd really takes it to its most profound mm -hmm. level. And the good there is a, a particular word. It doesn't just mean like good in character. It means attractive. Oh, it okay. means... Uh, it's callous. It's, mm -hmm. it's the, the Greek word for appealing. So it, it's not that he's just saying, I'm a good guy. Yeah. He's saying, no, I, you know, I attract people. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, people want what I've got. Right, right. And, uh, and so the focus on this particular, whereas the first, the gates about the sheep and the benefits there, right. really th this one is about uh, who Jesus is and, yeah. and his relationship. And, and, and the two things that qualify him is, I know my sheep. And then I lay down my life for my sheep. Mm -hmm. And he says it twice. He does. Yeah. And, you know, just to make sure we didn't miss it, you know. <laughs> and he says, and the father, by the way, uh, is impressed with this. Because yeah. yeah. I voluntarily, yeah. to, you know, it's like this scene in heaven, yeah. you know, where, you, you know, God's looking, the father's looking around, uh, you know, who, who can do this, you know, when the son steps forward and says, mm -hmm. hey, dad, I'll go, I'll take care of it. You know, uh, it's, pre it's, it's pretty touching, really. Yeah, and and that's and then that goes back to uh, tying into the er, earlier sort of I am statements about his, you know, who he is and as as the Son of God or as incarnation, yep. and uh, brings that back again about the Father and the, him knowing one another, right, yes. uh, and that familiarity there, uh, which again reinforces in John's theology the idea that Jesus is God. Right. And, and so these are the roles. I love the way you pointed it out that the first two statements really are more about these kind of theological narratives of light and bread. But this really is that relational piece and uh, inviting us to understand how he cares for us, how there's a, 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 a soothingness about that, I guess, yeah. is a way. Right? There's a, there's a, it and, makes us feel good. And, you know, there's an edge to this that I don't want to dwell on, but it surely meant a lot in his day. Yeah. He's also drawing a distinction between pseudo shepherds yeah, or other yeah, people yeah, yeah. So that have tried and, and said, no, uh -uh. I'm, I mean, there's no question in John's rendering that, that right. Jesus claimed to be the son of God. Yeah. And it, it, this wasn't up for discussion. That's right. I am the good, shepherd. you know, there are others that have tried, yeah. they, they, you know, that's destruction. I will save you. Yeah. I'll take care of it. Because on the two levels, one, one he's talking about those who've gone before thieves and robbers. And then he's talking about the hired guy, right? Yeah, yeah. And on both levels, it's like, there's no substitute for this, yeah, right. right? There is not a substitute for someone who's genuinely going to love you with a, a divine compassion. And, uh, and so it, it is a beautiful story and a beautiful way of exploring, you know. Well, and he actually is talking to the religious leaders. If, yes, if, yes, you, yes. Re if you read up in the, the chapter before, yeah. this picks up a discussion he's already in with them. Unfortunately, they didn't get it. Mm -hmm. I mean, after all, they're the ones that decided we got to we got to get rid of this guy. I mean, he really mm -hmm. challenges our religion. Uh, but the people sure got it. Mm -hmm. They yeah, under yeah, they absolutely. heard his voice then, and they hear it now. So, yeah, yeah. I would say let's just wrap it up kind of with a uh, you know, so what you know. Yeah. So what's our response to this? And I think the obvious thing is you know our response is to follow. Yeah. I mean, that's what sheep are obedient. That is another aspect of them. Um, I mean, if he's done all this for us, we'd be crazy not to, right. you know. Uh, but um, when I when I say follow, and by the way, the earliest disciples were called followers of mm -hmm. the way. That's right. That's and right. Jesus' invitation was never mm -hmm. be a Christ, come be a Christian. That's right. You know, come join the church. Yeah. Come be, you know, because he, he, he didn't come to establish a religion. He came to abolish religion. And, and he says, you want something really, just follow me. That was his invitation. Yeah. Still is. And that's when the sheep calls us. So if we hear the shepherd, and you, you made a great point earlier. Um, you know, Kathy and I have been married 43 years. And when she writes me a note or something and I read that, I hear her voice. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's yeah, in my yeah. head, yeah, you know. Yeah, I, right. I smell her. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I literally. There's a familiarity. That's right. There's a familiarity. It's that intimacy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and so I think Jesus is saying that, that that's where I want to be, mm -hmm. you know. And mm -hmm. so you follow me. So, uh, you know, just to wrap it up in Hillspring language, it would mean living or following would mean live abundantly. Yeah. Don't settle for anything less. Let's live like champ. I mean. 
Jesus didn't come all the way and put himself out and, and actually volunteer his life so we could live mediocre or wistful or mm -hmm. live it to the full. Yeah. Secondly, you know, love him more. You know, live, love, grow. Those are your three steps to become more like Jesus. Well, that's, you know, loving him more is practicing, just like you said, listening mm -hmm. for his voice. Mm -hmm. I, I hear him speak to me through the scripture. Mm -hmm. When I'm particularly the red letters, I've, after all, you know, uh, that's his voice. I hear him through other people. You know, you just learn to listen. And that would be fun, I think, for all of our listeners, mm -hmm. you know, to think, how do, how, when have I heard Jesus call me by name? When is the last time he spoke to me? When, how do I stay in touch with that? That's an important, uh, that's a journey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, grow. The, the big way to follow and uh, to grow through following is just to learn more trust. I mean, yeah. after all. Yeah. Where is Jesus going to lead us? Right. You know, right. I mean, he has our own good. Uh, you know, uh, he came all this way and did all he did, you know, to lead us to green pastures. So that's what I'd say. Yeah. Well, and then again, it's, it's very much a, a call to discipleship, isn't it? In the sense of trust. I mean, because even, even the narrative itself, the story, doesn't say there's not wolves out there. In fact, there's wolves that are identified. Yep. But I'm here to protect you from that. doesn't mean everything's going to... Christianity doesn't mean, uh, you know, a, a la-la land experience. Right. has its ups and downs. But the following Jesus part, the discipleship of that is that I'm here to care, watch out for you, and, and love you, right? Yep. And, and so that, it's, just, it's a beautiful story. And, uh, you know, I'll give you the last word before we wrap this up. But well, it's just, you know. Just, the, again, the intimacy of the shepherd with the sheep. Yeah, yeah. Because just like you said, we're all going to suffer. Yeah. We're going to have loss. Right. We're going to have joy. We're going to have pain. We're going to have victory. Through every bit of it, we are never separated. Yeah. The shepherd's always got us by That's hand. Right. Yeah. Well, Reggie, thank you so much. Yeah, man. It has been good to meet you in person. Yeah. And, uh, and I know for Hillspring, you have a long journey here. And uh, so uh, we want to thank you. And we'll have a podcast of this as well, so you can listen to it. Uh, but again, thank you, Reggie. Oh, yeah, man. And thank you for joining us.